now, Mr. McCord is going to begin the recording. So thank you, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. You are in the right place if you are looking for the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School High School Open House. So you have a child in grade eight. My name is Pat Finley. I'm one of the co-principals at MELS. I want to welcome you this evening. Again, just want to say it again. This evening's uh, webinar is being recorded. We are using the webinar format. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of information just coming from uh, Damon and Ashley and myself, and uh, hopefully it'll be the information you need as you're applying. We're going to be recording this session and then posting it to our YouTube page. Um, and tonight you should get a lot of information that can hopefully help you in your application. I'm going to hand off to Mr. McCall. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Damon McCord. I'm one of the co-principals and co-founders of MELS. Uh, first, we just want to make sure you are in the right place. So if you are here, it is because you are the parent of a current eighth grade student or you are an eighth grade student yourself who is interested in learning more about MELS. Um, if you are the parent of a fifth grade student and you're trying to learn about middle school at Mel's, uh, we just finished that open house and we will post that video to our YouTube page um, probably within the next day or so. Um, if you look at your Zoom screen, if you look right down below, uh, there is a, a button that says Q&A. Um, that is how we will be taking questions and answering your questions uh, as they come up. So. Um, I would ask that you maybe wait a little bit until we start to get into some of the information before typing your questions. Um, and we will either answer them live or we will uh, respond by typing an answer to them. Um, before we get started, I do just wanna take a moment to introduce our parent coordinator who also happens to be a MELS alum, um, Ms. Ashley Barcia, who's going to talk a little bit about where to find extra resources and how to access the translation of this meeting. Ms. Barcia. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Ms. Barcia. I'm the parent coordinator at MELS. I've been working at MELS for the past year and a half. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. I've also was a student myself. I started in seventh grade and finished all the way up to 12th grade. So if any families or students have any curiosities about what it's like being a student at MELS, want to see if it's the right school for you, definitely send me an email right in the chat um, and I'd be happy to help. Buenas noches a todas mis familias que hablan español. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros esta noche. Uh, bienvenidos. Uh, queremos saber que usted está en el sitio correcto. Esta cita es para todas nuestras familias que tienen un niño, una niña o estudiante en el grado octavo y no está buscando para aplicar a la escuela de high school y está interesado en nuestra escuela para aprender más. Um, nuestro principal les va a hablar sobre nuestra escuela. Si usted quiere escuchar esta cita en español, por favor uh, llama el número que voy a poner en el chat. Um, que es número 347-966-4114 con el código que voy a poner en el chat para que usted puede um, escuchar esta cita todo en español. Usted puede poner su pregunta en, en español en el chat también y yo le puedo responder. Um, muchísimas gracias y gracias por estar aquí. I'm going to pass it back to the principals. Great, thanks so much, Ms. Barcia. We are incredibly lucky to have her here. Uh, she was a wonderful student and she's been an extraordinary parent coordinator. So thanks, Ashley. Uh, again, my name is Pat Finley. And again, tonight's session is being recorded. If you wanna see it uh, again, you can go to our YouTube page. Tonight, uh, the overview is I'm gonna talk a little bit about the history and some background at MELS. Then we're gonna watch a video and then We'll talk a little bit about the application process and then we'll give you some of the nuts and bolts specifics of MELS and then we can answer some of the questions using the Q&A function uh, at the end. To start, I just want to share a little bit about the history of MELS. MELS is 12 years uh, old and we began with the sixth and seventh grade and we grew up and we have graduated, I believe, six uh, classes. Uh, I think this will be our seventh graduating class. And we are looking forward to their graduation. MELS has uh, it's a lot of wonderful things about MELS. And tonight you're going to hear about it and you can make a decision about whether MELS is the right fit for you. Um, 
you know, we're, we're not going to do too much bragging, but I can start with some of the accolades. Uh, Mel's has been recognized in the city as a showcase uh, in a learning partner school. We've been recognized nationally as a mentor school and a credentialed school by EL Education. Uh, I think there's only about 12 mentor schools across the entire country. Um, and, and Mel's has an exceptional staff that's won several awards and um, our students do exceptionally well. We get uh, students, uh, many of our students in sixth grade, some of our students come in ninth grade and we get to know students well. And those students graduate high school and go on and go on to college and persist through college. Uh, last year we had under 100% graduation rate uh, over our years, we have averaged about a 97% graduation rate. 99% of our students apply to college and are accepted. And uh, our unscreened school is among the highest unscreened schools in the city for, for students staying in and persisting through college. Uh, so we're really proud of that, proud of uh, the work our teachers and our staff do to support students. And the result is that Mel's has been a really successful school. Uh, it's been recognized for its success for, for a while. Um, the campus itself, just a little background, it is a newer campus. We uh, appreciate um, you know, having great facilities. We share those facilities with two other schools. There is Queens Metropolitan High School, a nine through 12 on the other side of the building and District 75, uh, District 75 program, that's P233, um, that's also on campus. The schools are all three separate and different. Uh, students don't really see each other or interact during the day because they are separate schools. They just happen to share the same campus. Uh, over the last year and a half, we have adapted quite a bit uh, due to uh, the regulations uh, following you know, uh, COVID and the pandemic. Uh, we have prioritized safety during that time and we will continue to prioritize safety. And uh, unfortunately, this open house is virtual. Uh, so uh, there are still some precautions being taken and adaptations to our regular program because of uh, the challenges of COVID. And, you know, this year, many uh, of much of school returned back to normal as students came back to campus. And hopefully next year in 2022, even more uh, of our regular school programs and activities will continue to return. I'm going to hand over to Damon and talk a little bit about our program. Great, thank you. Um, so when we first started MELS, um, we wanted to really kind of blow up the idea that um, that a public school that had a that had teachers that were in a union um, could do really cool things with students and uh, achieve amazing results and do well in college. And and so far we've done that. Um, our our mission was to was to get students interacting with the world in which they live and um, the world in which they're going to be a part of when they when they get older. Um, and so part of this uh, kind of reflection of reality is, is we are an incredibly diverse school. Um, New York City schools are some of the most segregated schools in the country. Um, we, on the other hand, are one of the most diverse schools in the city and the state. Um, and we really value and appreciate that and, and see it as a huge strength of our school. Um, our, our students are pushed to, to embrace the things that, that, that they might not be comfortable with, which is a huge skill when, when students uh, go on to college and go on to the world of work um, and, and have to kind of confront and learn about and experience things that they may not be familiar with. Um, we also, you know, are, are a our school that, that really believes in a, in a progressive model of education, which um, doesn't see students as, as test scores or just uh, receivers of information, but, but really value the, the whole child, um, students' social emotional health, um, their, their focus on their character, their, their habits of work and learning. Um, and, and we really want them to, to do meaningful work as students. And so, you know, as, as a school that believes in, in progressivism, your students will be in, incorporating like different, different aspects of their actual lives and the real world in, into what they're learning. Um, we think that is the best way to prepare students for college and for the world of work. And, and so 
you know, we didn't, we didn't open Mel's to, to have the best test scores or be the top on, on any list. Um, we want our, our students to be good people above all else. Um, the, the world needs that more than, more than they need anything else at this point. So um, you will see that our students do very well in school um, and they also emerge as, as pretty great people. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Finley who's gonna talk a little bit about EL Education who is our, our national partner and New York City Outward Bound who is our, our New York City partner. And then we're gonna watch two videos, uh, one of which was produced by New York City Outward Bound and the second one, uh, which is brand new and was produced by uh, some eighth grade students, uh, same age as your children, um, here at Mel's. So, Mr. Finley. So, uh, Mr. McCord and I, we, again, uh, we are very clear in valuing the whole child and uh, creating interdisciplinary work and students creating meaningful work and being critical thinkers. And we sought out a partner uh, that we thought would help build that school. Uh, New York City Outward Bound uh, is that partner uh, and Outward Bound is part of the Expeditionary Learning or EL Education Network of Schools across the country. Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School, in our name, you'll hear the words Expeditionary Learning. And what that means is, uh, again, it's learning where kids are asked to explore uh, the world. And the word expedition to us, what that means is rather than kids just going through a textbook, chapter one, two, three, four, and five, all in the test textbook companies' chapters, uh, instead our teachers work to take the same state standards that other schools use and they organize them into uh, interdisciplinary expeditions. In other words, our teachers look at the content and they map it out over the course of the year. And the English teacher is looking for where are the standards that connect with the social studies work? Where in our social studies and science teachers are looking for where the connections with the math work and our math teachers are looking for connections with uh, vocal music and health and PE. So our grade teams work together so that the learning isn't just memorizing standards and practicing skills, but learning how the information they're learning in global history might connect to chemistry or living environment. Additionally, as an expeditionary learning school, we have a structure called CREW. It's advisory. And that advisory uh, goes well beyond homeroom or even advisory at some schools. Uh, it has a similar look of a small group of students that a teacher is familiar with. Uh, and again, our CREW, our advisories are no more than 16 students. But those groups do meaningful work and take it, this, this is a credited class to start the day. So our advisories, um, they do activities to help students learn about one another, learn to work with one another. And then as they move toward junior and senior year, a lot of advisory focuses on preparing students for the world after high school. And we are a college preparatory school. That means all of our students will, we want to apply to college and be prepared for it and have that as a choice. Uh, our crews were especially uh, they're, they're wonderful all the time and an important part of our school. And remote learning last year really showed why crew is important for schools. Well, two years ago when the New York City Department of Education transitioned to online instruction at many high schools where teachers had 125, 150 kids, our crews were our main way to communicate. And our crew advisors, um, crews of no more than 16 kids, those teachers in leading those crews were able to know exactly where our kids were, what they needed and help them get online or help them get computers or whatever they might need to be successful. Crew is an important unit in our school. Crews also at the end of their, uh, toward the end of, or well, the middle of each semester, they present their work. And instead of just parent conferences where you come in and hear information from your teachers that you can often find on uh, online grading platforms, uh, students actually choose their work and call their work from class and share out how they're doing in class and talk about their strengths and challenges. Those are just some of the structures we have as an EL education school. Uh, EL education is partnered with hundreds of schools across the country that are suburban, urban, re, uh, uh, rural, and they are middle schools, high schools, elementary school, and private, public, and charter. But what all those schools have in common uh, again, these structures that really value us getting to know your children uh, as human beings, helping to support them to grow and then apply it and get into 
the colleges that will be the best fit to help them do the things that will change this world. Damon's gonna show you a little video of what uh, this looks like uh, because you don't wanna just hear us talking all night. So we'll show you a little bit about uh, what students and staff have to say. Our support system is really, really amazing. Whether it's peers or your teachers or your principals, you know that you have a whole bunch of people behind you supporting you and pushing you forward. And that's what really drives our success, is being supported. So when I feel that support, and us as individuals feel that support, then we can go ahead and domino effect that towards the students. In our schools, there's this really powerful sense of community. There's this ethos of we got crew, not passengers, where everybody takes care of and looks after one another. We basically stay in the same crew class throughout all four years of our high school experience. And like your crew basically becomes like a little family. Crew and the cooperation that happens in classrooms really helps to build connections between students and teachers and, uh, and empathy for one another. Teaching compassion and teaching character is a part of the curriculum. It's important for you to know and be able to take accountability for the things that you're learning. The work that we do is entirely student-centered. We think about our students constantly, both who they are, but also where they're at. I've been able to push past my comfort zone. Brooklyn Collaborative has kind of just made me persistent to the point where I believe that I can succeed in any setting. The academic work that students do really pushes them beyond what they thought was possible. Having to do research, not just like answer questions on a test, students learn more. One of the unique things about my school is the hands-on learning model. We do a lot of taking notes and just a lot of critical thinking. It's helpful not only here, it's a lot of uh, preparation for college. When our teachers design curriculum and they build our units, which are our expeditions, they, they look for content that is meaningful and relevant. Outward Bounds is a model that does think about the future and all that it does. And I believe that's the reason it stresses getting out into the community and doing your learning outside of the classroom, because that's the world that they will be living in. So when you go on field work, it's not necessarily like a field trip. It's a applied learning. Thank you for coming. Welcome to Nielsen. If I see the things I'm learning in school applied to that specific job, it's going to make me want to work more and make, make me more motivated. And that's our starting point, is a, both a belief and an expectation that, that everyone can do remarkable things. Just knowing that you have potential inside of you and it doesn't matter where you come from, you know that you'll be able to do as much as the person next to you. Anything is possible if I am somebody who's persistent, if I'm somebody who's kind, courageous, collaborative, and all those other core values that we hold dear. As I go on through college and as I go on through life, I'll keep that in mind to believe in myself more because I'm much more capable than I think I am. Okay, that was the outward bound version. Um, and now we're going to leave you with the student version uh, of Amel's video. One second.
So here at Mel's, we have crew. So we wanted to start off by showing you our sixth grade crew room. So crew is like very similar to homeroom and other schools, but crew is more of like a community and it's something that is really special at Mel's. <laughs> this is what we look like during crew, um, but now we're gonna do an initiative. So today we have this initiative of the Hulkathon where we do initiative just a fun activity um during the we were closing, so this is ours today. And the closing just helps us feel like we're going to do well in school and do well in our classes and succeed. On three, crew. One, two, three. Crew! At Mel's, there are expeditions, and expeditions are about two case studies. Basically, um, an expedition is like a whole topic that we're going to be learning about, like Eva said, for like a month or so. And then each class has a specific case study where you go deeper into the topic related to the subject. One thing I love about the Mel's community is the infinite groups. The infinite groups showcase different identities, religions, and sexualities. One of the aspects that we love about the Mel's learning environment is that teachers take our needs and what we need to learn best into consideration when planning lessons and events. Mel's teachers only want us to succeed and do our best in the Mel community. There are different aspects about Mel's learning that's specific to Mel's. For example, something I like about Mel's is I'm able to work together with my classmates and answer questions. Finally, one more aspect of Mel's that is specific to Mel's is our community is being included in Mel's. Um, every every culture is at least somewhat included at one point. And like Diana said, even cultures and different aspects of people are incorporated into our daily lessons to make sure that we all feel like we are learning more about each other and ourselves. Well, hopefully the New York City Hour Bound video that showed a little bit about our schools and the network uh, featuring Mel's and uh, the students' perspective that they were able to share a little bit this year. Hopefully that's helpful in looking at uh, schools as eighth graders and eighth grade families and trying to decide where you want to go for high school. I know that you're really excited for us to provide a ton of information about the application, and I wish we could. But the reality is that you're going to handle the application itself through your child's middle school. Mr. McCord and I don't see the application. We don't touch the application. We don't know how many seats there'll be. We don't know when the applications do because the DOE has not released that information. So you're going to have access to your child's application through your child's middle school. The date, due date will be set and you'll get that communication from your child's middle school. And then the results will come in the spring to where your child gets matched. We are not a screen school. We do not look at test scores. There is no preference in the Department of Education right now for siblings. And there's not preference for attending this open house. So that means it is a lottery and everyone who is, applies and ranks us highly will have a chance to get in. People love to ask us how high they should rank us. If we're your number one school, you should, you should rank us number one because we do have a lot of applicants, a lot of applicants. I, I don't know how many we'll have this year uh, and I don't know how many will put us number one, but I can only say again, if this is a school you wanna attend, then put us number one in your application and turn your application in and keep your fingers crossed and hopefully we will see you in the next fall. 
Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. McCord to talk a little bit more about MELS at the high school and what it looks like. Thanks. Um, so a few things that you might have seen in the video that I think are important for, for students to, to recognize it is first and foremost, you, you notice that our students wear um, a uniform. And I know I have a sixth grader myself uh, and having done this for, for over 20 years, I know there are lots of students out there who are like, there is no way I'm wearing a uniform. I don't want to go to that school. How else would I express myself? Um, if you are making a choice of school based on what you can wear, um, I would really urge you to, to rethink how you make decisions. Um, you, you should not be thinking that clothes are the only way you express yourself. The, we want our students to express themselves through the quality of their ideas and, and how they they think critically about different things. We want students to express themselves in terms of how they treat other people and, and how they work to make the world a better place. Um, those are the ways that we want students to, to think of themselves as individual beings, not because you have the flyest shoes or because you have, you know, um, rips in your jeans or, you know, whatever, whatever rock band shirt you have on. Um, so it's really important for us to, to kind of develop that, that sense of a shared culture in our school. Um, and then for high schoolers especially, uh, we have a really consistent cell phone policy. So we understand students need to bring cell phones with them um, because they, they might be traveling and they need to get in touch with parents. Um, but here in the building, once you enter the building, uh, the cell phones need to be turned off and put away in your bags. Um, we are really, really consistent with our cell phone policy. So, you know, if we see or hear a cell phone, we confiscate it. And the only um, person that we will release it back to is a parent or an adult that's on the blue card. And we know this is an inconvenience for parents, but it's also one of the reasons that we don't have uh, cell phones in use in our, in our classrooms and they're not a distraction for students. And having talked to hundreds of students over the years, um, students spend hours on these devices. It's okay for them to spend eight hours during the school day away from their devices and actually learning and interacting with other humans. Um, so we're really, really consistent. And a number of parents are, are going to say, you know, I think that's a great policy until it's your child who, whose phone went off in class and we confiscate it and you have to leave work or, um, it's before a weekend and you don't want your child to be away from their phone for three days, um, that's when it'll be inconvenient. And we're going to remind you of this meeting when we told you uh, that we are really consistent about it. Um, the, in terms of the schedule, uh, we are a school that believes deeply in making sure students have a lot of time to do those real world explorations and those projects that we talked about. So. Uh, to that end, we have really long class periods. They're about 67 minutes for high school. Um, we are not the school that, that's going to do 40 minute classes and, and you know, 34 kids in a class. That's, that's not really uh, our model here. So in, in high school, students are going to have um, four classes per week of each of the four content areas, uh, main content areas, so English, math, science, and social studies, uh, those will all meet at least four times per week. Um, students will also start their, um, their world languages sequence in ninth grade, and so they will also have a world languages class uh, multiple times per week. They will have um, a physical education class two times per week. They will have an arts class multiple times per week. Um, and, and the reason we do that is, is because we want to make sure, you know, students have a really solid academic experience, um, but also that we don't stretch students too thin to where they have eight or nine classes a day only meeting for, for 40 minutes because it's hard to do really good work during that short amount of time. Um, after school program, uh, we're part of a campus, and so we have over 20 different PSAL uh, sports teams. So if your if your student is an athlete, uh, they can they can definitely go out 
for one of those sports teams. Um, we have uh, a number of electives and AP courses as students get further along into high school. Um, and so, you know, we, we currently have AP English, AP Biology, uh, AP Capstone, AP Government, and AP Spanish, um, as well as AP Biology. Uh, I can't remember if I said that or not. Um, so, so that's uh, a little bit about our high school program. Uh, we do have after school clubs as well. So we have some STEM club. We have Mel's Mentors, where our older students uh, mentor some of our younger students. Um, we have Plant Care Club. Uh, pretty much if we have a uh, an awesome dance team. Um, pretty much if students are interested in a club, they can find an adult in the building to be an advisor, and we will make it happen. Um, so, so that's a little bit about the schedule and about the how, how the day is laid out. When students come in, uh, our day starts at 8.30, they go to crew, they have crew for, for 40 minutes, or I'm sorry, for 30 minutes, and then they go to their academic classes. Uh, they will have five academic classes per day, and then uh, they will also have a, a 40 minute lunch. So, um, that's the schedule at Mel's. I'm now going to turn it back to Mr. Finley who can wrap us up and, and talk a little bit about why, why would you want to apply to Mel's? Thanks, Damon. Just a reminder of the people who've been putting the questions in the chat or in the Q&A, you are doing a great job. We've been answering those, uh, but we are using the Q&A function. So if you've raised your hand or put your question in the chat, use the Q&A function and we will answer it. Um, but to wrap up tonight, Tonight is not like our classes. Our classes are exciting and student-centered. Tonight is two guys, for the most part, giving you information. Uh, and we do that, again, we're just kind of getting the information out there in the recording in the open house so that families have the information at the fingertips that, that they often need. Uh, so, so again, we're just kind of giving that information so you have a resource for getting the questions answered that you need. Um, just there are a lot of great high schools in New York City. We are one of those great high schools, but we only want people to apply. We not because the campus is nice, but because you believe that this is the right school for you or for your child. That's why you should be applying to Mills. And if you're looking for a school where your child's known well, if you're looking for a school where students have a well rounded experience that goes beyond memorization of skills. Uh, where a school that values field work and real opportunities for students to ex examine how things uh, that they learn are applied, a school that values equity and diversity is meaningful for students, uh, a place that values students investigating and trying to find answers. Uh, those are the kinds of things that you would value if you're applying to MELS. And again, we, we have a strong track record if you're looking for a school with a strong a uh, set of data uh, that, that shows that students graduate, uh, apply to college, get into college and go on and, and do well at the college that they want to go to, whether that's Yale or uh, SUNY Albany or Barnard or uh, LaGuardia, we worked for your child to get into the college that's a right fit for them. Um, so our students apply to a wider range of colleges. Uh, and if for those reasons, if all the things that I just said are what you're looking for, because we are a college prep high school, then, then you should apply. And we would welcome that application. We would recommend that you rank us highly. So that brings tonight's open house to an end. Hopefully we provided a lot of information that is helpful to you. And hopefully um, we'll be seeing you next fall. Uh, we are going to take the last few minutes to wrap up by answering questions in the Q&A that have not been answered. Um, so I'm going to hand to Damon, who's going to answer some questions in the Q&A, and then we're going to bring tonight's session to an official close. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Um, so there is a question in there about uh, the regents uh, and if students have taken them before. Yes, our students uh, do take the Regents exams. Um, it's been a little weird the last 18 months because of all the Regents waivers and the cancellations. Um, but our, our students usually do well on the Regents. Um, 
they're, they're not really a barrier to our students graduating. Um, and, and so, so yeah, uh, we, we do the Regents and it's not an issue. Um, there are a number of AP classes. It, it varies slightly from year to year, um, but I, I answered that before. We do AP Biology, AP English, AP Government, um, AP Calculus, AP Capstone, and I think those are the five. Uh, and there might be more, or there might be, you know, a, a different set uh, in the future. It looks like we have gotten through all of our questions. Um, we really appreciate those of you that have signed on to, to this open house uh, for, we appreciate you signing on and, and taking the time. And we wish you the best of luck in the, in the application process. Thanks, good night, and hope everybody's well. Thank you all, good luck. Get that information from your middle school. The application process has started, so get that information from your middle school about when to turn it in. Um, thank you all, have a good night.